All right, let's take a look at code.org express course. And we're going to be going into um, some more on variables. So let's go into lesson 20, changing variables with B. And we'll start right here in lesson one. All right, so as we go into lesson one, it says, finish this code so that the bee can collect all of the honey and nectar. And they already have some starter code in here. Um, and so this is changing variables. So if you remember variables last time, we had to set the length for the triangle uh, to 50 pixels, but this time they have set gather to two. So they're having a variable for gather. So it says, finish this code, and they have a repeat loop and they have collect row. So this green block here, this is called a function. And a function is a name you give to a group of code that you want to repeat over and over. So you want to use it more than once. So you, um, if you could imagine, this whole thing would not be seen on the screen. Um, and this is what your code looks like. You've got a when run, set gather, a repeat, and a collect row. It's pretty short. There's not much to it. Um, and then in the collect row, when that gets run in the behind the scenes, we have a repeat, do move forward, repeat, get nectar, move forward, repeat, do make honey, and then turn left. So all of that code is going to happen whenever we say collect row. So the way this one works is this little B is going to have to move forward and go around this loop here um, all the way to the end. When you get to a flower, you're going to get nectar. And when you get to honeycomb, you're going to make honey. So I would like to first think about my code using pseudocode. So just words instead of the blocks themselves. So I'm just going to say that out loud. So I want my bee to go forward, forward. It's a flower. So get nectar and then go forward. And it's honeycomb. So make honey. And then I want it to turn left. And then I want the bee to go forward, forward, get nectar, forward, make honey, turn left. And then I want the bee to go forward, forward, get nectar, forward, make honey. Um, and it wouldn't matter if it turned left because I heard myself saying forward, forward, get nectar, get forward, get honey, turn left. Forward, forward, get nectar, forward, get honey, turn left. Forward, forward, get nectar, forward, get honey, turn left. Turn left wouldn't really make a difference, but I hear a pattern as I say that. So this says, um, move forward, get nectar, make honey. And this little number here, the two, tells you how much nectar you have to get and how much honey you have to get. So um, I'm going to say I want the bee to go forward, forward. So I want him to repeat it two times. And then I want him to get nectar two times. And then I want him to go forward just one time, so that's not in a repeat loop. And then I want him to get honey, or make honey, two times. So right here. So now I could go into math and I could get a two, and I could drag a two in there every time. But if the code changed and I didn't want it to be two every time, um, I might want a variable that could change. And so it looks like they have set gather. So how much am I gathering? Whether I'm gathering honey or I'm gathering nectar, I'm gathering it two times. So I'm going to take gather, and I find that under variables, which is in purple, and I'm going to drag that over here. So I know that's two times. And let's see here. Take this gather. I want you to get nectar two times. And I want you to make honey two times. And uh, so how many times do I need to run this whole code? So I need to go one time, two times, three times. So I'm since that's a different number, I'm not going to use gather. I'm just going to put a number in there. So I'm going to put in a three. All right. So basically what's happening is this whole function, you could imagine um, if it's hidden, when collect row gets triggered in the code, that's going to run. So let's try when run. All right. So if you have questions on that, please feel free to email me or ask me what you are confused about. Let's move forward. So we're on lesson 20, part two. And this is going to edit your solution in one place so that the bee can collect all of the honey and the nectar. So I would recommend saying out loud what you want this bee to do and then try to 
to change your code. So go ahead and pause um, this video and try it yourself in code.org. Okay, so I hope you tried the same thing that I did, and that is instead of going forward twice like last time, I'm going forward one, two, three times. Instead of getting nectar twice, I'm getting nectar three times. Instead of making honey twice, I'm making honey three times. So every time there's a t it was two, now it's three. So if I had used a number over here, I would have to change it in every single spot. But since I used a variable, all I have to do is, it says edit your solution in one place. I just have to change this guy right here from a two to a three, and then my code should work. All right, let's see what lesson 20 part three has in store for us. Such an amazing garden, it's a maze. So in this puzzle, each patch needs the variable to be one less than the patch before. Subtract one from the variable each time through the loop if you want to use the same function to solve this level. So I love it when I'm in class and I can show you on the board. This is exactly the same code that we had a minute ago. But now if you look, now we gotta go forward one, two, three, get it three, forward, get it three. And then we go, forward one two get it two forward get it two and then turn left and then we go forward one get it one forward one get it one so instead of it being two all the way through or three all the way through it goes three two one the very beginning i want to set gather my variable gather to three because at first i do need you to go forward one two three and i do need you to get nectar three times but then after that happens I want my variable to go down a number. So after I run this function, I want to change the variable's value. So what I can do is I can go over to math um, and I can pull this out because I'm going to need that. And I'm going to say instead of um, one plus one, I'm going to say take my gather. So I need my variable here, gather. And I'm gonna set my gather to gather minus one. So that means if it was three and I take away one, then it's two. And if I take away another one, then it's one. And I'm gonna have to set that. So I'm gonna set gather two. And now I want it to be repeated in the loop. So I'm gonna make sure I push it underneath the collect row. So now I've got this equation that says set gather two, gather minus one. So in the beginning, set gather to three. I run it here and it's three, three, three. It goes all the way through that function. Then I set whatever it was, so three, to three minus one. So now gather is two. And I repeat this again. So I go to collect row. So now this is two, two, two. After that function is run, set gather to whatever it was, which is two minus one, which is one. We go back through. And now we do this whole thing with one. So you can use variables as a number that gets changed over time. So if this instead was a different kind of game, this might say set lives to three, and then after you bumped into the wall or whatever, however your game worked, you'd say make lives to lives minus one, so it took away a life. Um, if you had this as score, if you said set score, maybe you would wanna start your score as zero, and then as you went through, if you completed the maze, Maybe you'd set your score to score plus one. So you can have a different kind of equation depending on what you're trying to do in your game. So let's run this and see what happens. Hopefully you're getting the hang of how variables work. Let's see what lesson 20 part four has in store for us. All right, so we're still going to use their collect row that they have for us. And we have, let's keep going, edit the code to make it work for this puzzle. So we have set gather to three. This is what we used just a second ago. They haven't changed it on us. And now instead of starting at three, I'm gonna be starting at one. So I just talked about this out loud. And what would I change to make this work? So I'm gonna start at one and I wanna end up at three. So go ahead and give it a try. See what else you need to change and then come back. All right, so what I am going to change is set gather to gather instead of minus one, plus one, so that we start at one and then we go to two and then we go to three. 
Did you do the same thing? Let's run it. Great. All right, on to lesson 20, part five. Create your own code to solve this puzzle. So I'm gonna give you a chance to try it out. So please pause and give it a whirl and see what you come up with. Okay, so I'm gonna talk myself through this and I'm gonna say forward, get nectar, forward, get make honey, turn right, forward, forward, get nectar, forward, uh, get nectar twice, forward, forward, make honey twice, turn right. Forward, 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 get nectar three times. Forward, 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 get make honey three times. And it wouldn't matter if I turned at the end. So I am going to use a function just like they did. And I drag this function over and call it, instead of do something, I'm going to call it um, collect row just like they did. And uh, when I do that, I want to, just like they did, repeat the moving forward. So actions is where I get my move forward from. And so I'm gonna have to move forward and then I'm gonna have to do loops again. And I'm gonna get nectar because it's a flower. So actions, get nectar. And then after that, I'm gonna have to make honey. So let me get another loop. And I'm going to make honey, that's in actions. And I would like to use a variable, so I'm going to set my variable here, and I'm going to call that, rename it, I'm going to call it gather, just like we did before. And I'm going to set that to 1 in the beginning. So let's see here, 1. And then I'm going to repeat my um, a variable name time. So I'm going to grab the variable name gather and put it in over here. You can do this in different orders, however you think about it. This is just me talking you through how I do it. All right, so I, I knew I was going to move forward, get nectar and make honey, gather times, and I'm starting at one. Um, after I do that, I'm going to turn right. So let me get another action here, and I'm going to turn right. So this is gonna get this row, and then if I repeat it a different number of times, it's another row and another row. So that's my function. If I click run right now, my function is not being called. So I do need to bring the function over here. So I have uh, that. So if I do that one time, it's gonna run one time. I'll just show you what happens here. It doesn't keep going. It didn't, um, didn't, didn't make it all the way through. And so the other thing is I go forward and forward once, I go forward, 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 forward. So I actually need another one of these guys, control C is gonna copy that whole thing and control V, I'm gonna paste it in. That happens after I get nectar. So this is move forward, get nectar, move forward, make honey, turn right. Um, but I have three rows, so I need another repeat loop. And I need to run that function three times. And just like we did before, I need to change my variable to increase every single time. So I'm gonna set my gather to, I need a math equation. And whatever my variable was, I want it to be that plus one. I may not have it right, but let's give it a try. So I know this is a little bit tricky, jumping in here, starting with variables, and you've got a function and repeat loops, but I think this is a good way to get started because you get exposed to a lot of the pieces, and I'm talking you through it. Um, so as we get through into the next sections, hopefully you will have some experience and feel more confident. So let's keep going. I'm um, not going to have you do lesson six. I'm going to have you le do lesson number eight, though. If you want to keep going, by all means, you're more than welcome to. Um, but you don't have to. So lesson eight is just a quiz, and I want you to take a look at this. Here is um, some code, and what do you think is going to happen? So when you look at here, we've got set nectar to one, so we've got a variable, uh, and it starts at one, and then it says move and increment. So move forward, 
and the nectar goes from nectar plus one. So here's my function, and the function is being called. And then it says set nectars to nectars plus one after this is being called. And then it calls the function. And then, so this is really a very um, robust bit of code here. So do your best to figure out what you think is going to happen. So it says, look at the code below. How many units of nectar will the bee collect at the end? It says 10 here, but is that actually what it's telling you to do? You'd have to cycle through this and think through it. Recommend you doing it out loud. So it's one, and then it's one plus one, which is two. And then it's two plus one, which is three. And we go into here. So just keep on going all the way through to see what you think. So look at the code below. How many units of nectar will the bee collect at the end? A, the bee won't collect any nectar because the variable isn't called gather. B, the bee will only collect two nectar. C, the bee will collect all the nectar. D, I don't know. Uh, I will tell you it is not A because you can call a variable anything that you want to call it. So go ahead and read through the code and give it your best shot. Okay, I wonder what you came up with. I'm just going to talk you through this. So set nectar to one, and then we go in here, and it's one plus one, which is two, and then we do it again. Two plus one is three. Do it again. Four, five. Set nectar to zero, so we're back to zero. Then we go in here, so zero plus one is one. Zero plus, uh, one plus one is two. And then it says repeat nectar times. Repeat two times, get nectar. So that would be two times. Um, not that we finish the maze, but I'm going to say it's... B. Okay. And I don't know why he... Oh, it's because he moved forward each of those um, times. All right. So that's it for this tutorial on Lesson 20. I hope you enjoyed it. I know there's a lot of components in there. If you have any questions, please email me or reach out to me um, and ask. Even if you need a further explanation, I'd be happy to talk you through it. So I hope you're doing well and great job coding.